Which one did we, were we working on? Which one was? 61. Did you ever get it? We did get it? How about 60? How far did I say to go to? 71. 71. Yeah, let's do 61. 61 is, is pretty bad. Tangent theta, this is number 61, plus secant theta minus 1 over tangent theta minus secant theta plus 1 equals tangent theta plus secant theta. All right, I'm going to read the problem. You tell me if I have it up there right. Tangent theta plus secant theta minus 1 is at the top. The denominator tangent theta minus secant theta plus 1 equals tangent theta plus secant theta. Yes? Okay. This number 61. The thing that really is, is tricky about this one or look, should look weird to you is the fact that the, the numerator and denominator here have three terms in them. Like most of the problems up to here in the homework, there's always been like two things here and two things here. Here we have three and three. So on this one, would you like for you to guide me, or would you like me to just go through? I have you, like to, you like to watch me struggle? You doing it? Just like, let's see what's happening? Okay, so give me an idea then. Can we turn secant theta minus one into tangent? Almost. If it was secant squared, we could, right? The Pythagorean identity is that secant squared theta minus one is tangent squared theta, but you have to have secant squared. And you can't just square it. You can't just be like, oh, let me just square that, right? Tangents and, and secants have the same denominator of cosine, so I want to change everything into sine and cosine and merge. I like that idea. So you're saying, again, kind of like, Let's change that to sine and cosine, yeah. sine and cosine for everything, and then those two might merge together. Yeah, we'll get sine plus one over cosine, then minus one. Do you all see that as a reasonable way to go? Yeah. Change everything to sine and cosine? Because this is sine over cosine, that's one over cosine. This is sine over cosine, then minus one over cosine. So maybe we get a common denominator? I don't know. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to rewrite it. This is sine theta over cosine theta plus one over cosine theta, that's secant theta minus one, over, and then sine theta over cosine theta, and then minus one over cosine theta, and then minus one. Plus one. Oh, plus, oh thank you, thank you, thank you. Paying attention, thank you. Okay. Now, you said you want to do that because you want to put these together, or like you could put them together. Would you all like to put just these two together, or do you want me to do a cosine over cosine here so that they all three have a common denominator and put them together? I don't care, you t or just, you tell me, I don't know. Let's take it, let's do things. You would just, this stuff first? Yeah. Okay, so if I put those together, it'll be sine theta plus one over cosine theta. Then I still have minus one out here. And then over, here will be sine theta minus one, but over cosine theta. And then I have plus one out here. Y'all see all I did was just put these two together and put those two together because they have the same denominators. Now remember, we're trying to get to the right hand side which has tangent and secant in it. All right, but I mean, that's okay. What now?
Well, just like if I was taking the fraction 3 fourths and adding it to the number 1. If I want to add these together, I'd rewrite this as 4 over 4, right? And then I'd have a common denominator, I could put them together. That's all I'm saying is that if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as minus cosine over cosine and then put those together. Or I could do it here. Cosine over cosine, and then I can put those together, right? And then I can do cosine over cosine, and then I can put those together. If I wanted to. I'm just, we don't have to. I can't flip until this is all together into one fraction. Then I could flip. But if you want, we can do that. I'm not. Then we could flip it, yes? Yeah. You all want to do that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as sine theta plus 1 over cosine theta. Then minus, I'm going to take my time, cosine theta over cosine theta. And then over sine theta minus 1 over cosine theta. And then plus cosine theta over cosine theta. <laughs> I see. And then I can now put those two together, right? Because they have the same denominators. All right, well, I'll see you all on Tuesday. Y'all have a good one. All right, thanks. Sir. Yep. I'm just kidding. Sine theta plus 1 plus cosine theta over cosine theta over sine theta minus 1. You've missed nothing, so don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. That's it. Feels like Friday. All right. So copy dot flip, right? This is a fraction divided by a fraction, so you can make basically take this one, flip it, and. Something good's going to happen there with the cosines, right? They cancel, right? Do I need to show this, or can I just go to this step? You want to show it? All right. So there's the top. I'm keeping the top the same. And then I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of the bottom. So this is the whole like, keep dot flip thing. Okay, so I just kept this one, make sure I copied it down right. And then I took this and flipped it over, and I'm multiplying now. And the cosines cancel, right? So now I have on top sine theta plus one minus cosine theta over sine theta minus 1 plus cosine theta. And no, this is not turned into 1, and that does not turn into 1, right? You can't cancel these. They have addition and subtraction between them. And we're supposed to get to this? We still have three things on top and three on the bottom, don't we? Um, well, I'd need a fraction to flip. I don't really have anything that I can like do a keep dot flip type thing. So you mentioned something earlier, right? About sometimes it's worth looking at, looking at the right side and seeing what we're trying to get to, right? But maybe just kind of cleaning it up a little bit, right? Which is part of the reason I wanted to do this problem. I wanted us to just consider, like right now we're trying to get from here to here. There's not a clean path, or it doesn't look like we have a clean way here. But this really means sine theta over cosine theta, right? I'm looking at the right-hand side right now, plus 1 over cosine theta. That's what the right-hand side is, right? Yeah? And can I put those together into one fraction? They have the same denominator, right? So this is going to be sine theta plus 1 over cosine theta. The reason I'm doing that is because maybe, maybe if we can get this 
to there, then there's a clean path the rest of the way, right? Just going backwards this way. But the, the thing that's nice about this is it has the sines and the cosines in it. So can we get from here to here? I'll, I will let you lead, continue to lead. That's what you wanted me to do. Any ideas here? Yeah, go ahead. So I want to try and get the, the cosine on the bottom by itself. So here you have a sine. Uh huh. Would there be a way to multiply by sine theta plus four? Like on the top and bottom? That's exactly what you do. Good job. Yes. So look, here's the deal. Right now, I mean, honestly, looking at this, being completely frank with you, this looks like we have done not much. I mean, because we still have three terms and three terms, right? And I'm trying to get to this, right? And so I can say to myself, look, I need at the end of the day to have a sine theta plus one on top, right? I, I'm going to need that. Right now, I don't have a sine theta plus one on top. I have a sine theta plus one minus cosine theta, right? So I can force, I can force the sine theta plus one to happen on top. And the only way I can force it is if I multiply this by one. And the one that I pick, or was picked for us, is sine theta plus one over sine theta plus one. We multiply the top and bottom by that. Why? Because we're, we kind of have no other things that look like they're going to get us a sine theta plus one by itself on top. Do you all see I have forced it now to be there? I forced it. There it is. That's, that's what I eventually want to have on top. So I'm going to leave this alone. I'm not going to multiply it times this at all. I'm going to leave those two alone. But I am going to expand everything out on the bottom. I'm going to multiply all that together. OK, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave that there. See, sometimes you just have to take the swing, right? If you take a swing, sometimes you miss, and sometimes you, you hit, right? So I'm going to leave the numerator alone. By the way, this is not necessarily the only way to do this problem, right? This is just the path that we are on, leaving, the, leaving everything on top alone. But I am going to multiply out the bottom. OK, here we go. Multiply this times this. What do you get? Uh, no? Sine times sine, sine squared? Sine squared. Sine squared theta. OK, now we do this times this. plus sine theta. OK, now we do the negative 1 distributed through. Negative 1 times sine minus sine, minus sine theta. And then we do the negative 1 times 1, minus. minus 1. We still have more multiplications, right? Yep. We have to do cosine, cosine times sine. Sine theta, cosine theta. Running out of room here. And then last multiplication here to here is going to be plus cosine theta. Jeez. Does anything good happen here? The signs, the signs cancel. So it still looks like we're not getting anywhere because it still looks terrible on the bottom, doesn't it? Until you see the next thing, who's going to see it? Sine squared. Oh, so you're looking at the sine squared minus 1, the whole thing together? Yeah? I know where you're going with that. But could we just, how could we, how could we rewrite this? Using a Pythagorean. One minus, One minus cosine squared, right? We could. We could, yes. Is that all right if I do that? Yeah. Is everyone okay with me taking this and rewriting it as 1 minus cosine squared? All right, let me do that.
I'm going to leave that up there because that's where we're trying to get to, right? We're trying to get to that. So here's where I am. On the top, I have sine theta plus 1 minus cosine theta. And then I have the sine theta plus 1. And then on the bottom, I have rewriting this as 1 minus cosine squared theta. That's the Pythagorean identity. These two went away. Minus 1. And then I have plus sine theta, um, cosine theta. And then I still have at the end plus cosine theta. Do you all see what happens there? The, the 1 and the negative 1 cancel, right? Those completely cancel. That and that go away, right? So now we have sine theta plus 1 minus cosine theta times sine theta plus 1 over Notice that everything in the denominator that's left has a what in it? Everything that's left in the denominator has a cosine, doesn't it? Right? So I can factor a cosine out. Why would I want to do that? Remember, this has a cosine on the bottom, doesn't it? So let's factor that cosine out. If I factor that cosine out, what's left when I pull cosine out? Cosine theta out of this, I get what? Minus cosine theta. When I pull cosine theta out of these two, what do I get? Sine. Plus sine theta. And when I pull cosine theta out of this, what do I get? Plus 1. Right? That's what would happen. Do you all see it? These are exactly the same. Right? Sine theta plus 1 minus cosine theta. Sine theta plus 1 minus cosine theta. They are the same. We can cancel them. And now that we're here, we have sine theta plus 1 over cosine theta, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's why you didn't factor out the top? That's why I didn't multiply out the top, because this was, we forced that in there, didn't we? Forced it into the top. And then when we did that, things worked out. Yes? Here to here? Or the denominator, I'm sorry. Yeah, the denominator. Okay, so the ones are gone, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's gone, that's gone. This right here, all of these have a cosine, right? This has a cosine, that has a cosine, that has a cosine. So I pull out one factor of cosine. Okay. When I pull a cosine out of this, right, I'm left with the negative cosine here, right? Think about if I multiply these two together, I get negative cosine squared. Here I pulled the cosine out, so I'm left with the sine, right? Because if I multiply here to here, I get those two. And then I pull cosine from here, so I have a plus 1. And then they cancel. Now, I'm not going to say that that's the cleanest path to that answer, but that is definitely a path, right? All right, that's half the class we've taken on this. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, asking you to do identities on an exam is a, is a tricky proposition, isn't it? Well, I mean, no, I mean, I could give you one that you just, you get it and it, it, it just works out. You just go down the path and everything's nice, and then you can have others where you can get stuck, right? I'm going to give you one where I copy it down wrong. How about that? I'll give you one that isn't an identity. All right, um, any last requests? We're going to move this, leave this section behind. Anything else on this? I had you go up through what, 70, 71, okay. Let me do this. I had pulled up a test. I had pulled up an exam. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, I had pulled up an exam, and I had a couple of identities here on this old exam. Two, 
Just to give you an idea of, of a question I've asked before, all right, on a test, you all want to do one of those? I have like a couple here, but this will be it. This will be the last thing we do. Secant theta over coat. No, oh, that one's, no, that's one. Cosecant. Cosecant x minus 1 over cosecant x plus 1 equals 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x. Cosecant x minus 1, cosecant x plus 1. All right. This isn't necessarily like the most challenging problem in the world. It's just this is something I have given on a test before. Which side do you want to start with? Left. Left? And what do you want me to do? Reciprocal. Write those reciprocal identities down. So rewrite this as 1 over sine, 1 over sine. 1 over sine x minus 1 and then over 1 over sine x plus 1. Yes. Do you want me to do that? That would be a good idea because that means at the very top you would end up with a 1 over sine x over the sines. Yeah. So in other words, we're going to wind up putting these two together like a common denominator? Yeah. Yeah. I like that idea. So 1 over sine x minus sine x over sine x. Rewriting that, that 1 over here is a sine x over sine x. And then 1 over sine x. Uh, plus sine x over sine x. That fair? Now the whole point of that was so that we could put these two together. That gives me 1 minus sine x common denominator over, sorry, over the common denominator. And then on the bottom I can put those two together, so 1 plus sine x over sine x. And I think it's just one step away, right? the keep dot flip thing, right? So this is just keep the, keep the top fraction, bottom, times flip the bottom one over, signs cancel, and that's your answer. That's your right hand side. I think that one was pretty, pretty direct, wasn't it? Do you agree? All right, we're moving on. We have, we have two new formula, well actually four new formulas today. Four new identities. Uh, what did I say, A4? A5, sum and difference formulas, or sum and difference identities. Sum, difference, identities. Okay, so I want to write something down on the board just to get us started with this idea. If I write this down, 4 times x plus 2, or let's say x plus 1, all right? And I ask you to multiply this out, you would distribute the 4 through like this, right? And you get 4x plus 4. That's, that should be simple, right? Algebra? All right, if I write this down, sine of x plus 1. Do you treat the sine the same way you treat the 4 here? Is, is the sine like a, like a number that can be distributed through the parentheses? So my question is, does this become sine x plus, what would you say now? Sine. Sine. So, if you're, if you're doing this times this, you're doing sine times x, is that what you're doing? And then here you're doing sine, what, sine times 1? Or sin times, what? Sine times. Is it? Wouldn't that be the sin? argument? 
Yeah, you can't do this shit, is what I'm getting at. This is totally illegal, all right? And the reason it's illegal is because sine is not a number, okay? So we don't treat it like a number here where we distribute through parentheses. Sine is a function, and the thing inside here is the argument. It makes no sense to pass sine through the parentheses. This is not, this isn't a number. You don't understand what I'm saying? So this is completely wrong, all right? I'll give you another example of, of what I'm talking about here. If I write sine x right now, divided by x, can I cancel the x's? Can I? Is this x being multiplied? Is there multiplication right here between this and this? No, it's sine of x, right? This x is the argument of this trig function. So if you did cancel it, right? If you did, what would be left? If you did that, what would be left? No. A sin. That's a sin. You see what I'm saying? That is a sin to do this. I don't make this, these jokes up, okay? Right? That, this is completely wrong. Because you cannot... If I just write this on the board right now, that makes no sense. The sine function must have an argument to it. It must have something in it, right? The angle that's going in. Whatever that angle is, if it's x plus 1, you cannot distribute through. It does not behave like a parenthesis, like over here. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see with students, is they want to treat any, anything inside the sine function, if there's multiple terms in there, they want to treat this like they can just distribute it through. You can't, all right? So the question then becomes, what if you have, hold on, let me get to something here. There it is. There. So the question becomes, what if you have sine, and inside of the sine, I want to use the same notation they use, you have some angle alpha plus some angle beta. Then the question is, what does this become? What is this? Right? That's the question. What does this become? Well, I can tell you what it's not. This is not sine of alpha plus sine of beta. It is not that, because what you're doing there is you're trying to distribute the sine through. Not allowed, okay? So I'm gonna tell you what it is, all right? And all these formulas, you know your formula sheets that you're allowed to have? These are on there, all right? So you don't have to memorize these, um, but here's what it is. It's sine of, sine of alpha cosine of beta Plus, I want to do it the way they do it. So sometimes the order is different on different formula sheets. Yeah, they do the cosine. So cosine alpha sine beta. That's the formula for it. Now, I could go through the proof of this and show you why this is true. Maybe I will at some point if we have enough time left over. I can draw the the triangles, I can prove that this is true. For now, I'm just gonna have you take this on faith, for now, all right? So if you ever wanna take sine of an angle plus an angle, two angles added together, you wanna take the sine of that, what you do is you take the sine of the first angle, multiply it times cos, multiply it, multiply that answer by cosine of the second angle, add to that cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. That's the formula. So, for example, if I wanted to know what sine of pi over 3 plus pi over 2 was, what would that be according to this formula? Sine of pi over 3, Cosine of pi over 2. So you're just, all you're doing here is you're recognizing that this is like the alpha and that's the beta in the formula. You're just plugging in, right? So sine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 2 plus cosine pi over 3 times sine of pi over 2, right? According to the formula, that's what it is. Just plugging in and chugging out the answer, right? Any questions there? So where exactly is the cosine coming from? I just don't that's the formula. I'm, t I'm, t I'm telling you that's what this is. You are, oh, you, you are believing this. Okay. 
You're believing this to be true, all right? I might prove it next time if I have time. If I feel like we have enough time, I'll prove this, okay? okay? All right, now, it, in this case, hold on, do we know these values? Do you know sine of pi over three? Do you know where pi over three is? Do you know what the y coordinate is? Is it? What is it? Pi over three is this one, right? The y coordinate is root, no, that's the x coordinate. Oh, radical three over two? I think you're thinking pi over six. Yeah, this is root three over two times, what's cosine of pi over two? So cosine, pi over two is straight up. Cosine is the x coordinate. So that's zero. Plus, right, what's cosine of pi over three? One half, that one's one half. And then what's sine of pi over two? One. And so the answer is one half. Questions? Yes? How do we what? Well, these two multiply together to be zero, right? And then you're adding to that one half and one is a half. Let me give you another one. Can I erase? What is sine? What is sine of? Seventy five degrees. No calculator. No calculator. So you're sitting there going, well, why are you giving me this when their formula had two things being added together? Right? Well, 75 is not a common angle, right? However, what is it? What two angles added together? 30 and 45. Those are two angles you do know, right? So you could rewrite this as sine of, now do you want me to do 30 first or 45 first? 30? Okay, 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. Do you all agree that's, that's sine of 75? And now I can use the formula because 30 and 45 are common angles and I know the sine and cosine values. So this would be sine of which angle? One half. Well, okay, but the angle is 30, right? We're going to do sine of 30, cosine of... 45 and then plus cosine of 30 and then uh, sine of 45. Wait, yeah, there we go. Right, that's me just plugging in the alpha and beta into the formula. Okay, now you can tell me. What sine of 30? One half. One half, thank you. One half times cosine of 45? Radical two over root two. Root two over two. Okay, plus cosine of 30, 